Hey everyone, this is Dr. Tim and welcome to one of my videos. Now today, we're gonna to talk about rubber dam. My friends at Hugh Freedy have sent me a few things, um, a template, some rubber dam clamps, including their black line clamps. I did a review on these two years ago. Check out the, the little thing at the top there and you can see how amazing they are. They also sent me a rubber dam hole puncher and a clamp holder as well, um, as well as a frame. Now, they're not sponsoring this, but they've sent me some stuff, so I've got some clean instruments that are sparkling bright for you to see. But I have got a, um, a black line clamp that's three years old, and I wanted to show you how that, that kind of came up. So if you have a look there, that is a black line clamp that is three years old. Now, that's done really well. Um, a brand new one looks like that. Ta-da! And that's one that was three years old. Now, the only damage I can really see to blackness is where our nurses have used a, um, like a spoon excavator to scrape composite off those, um, that clamp. But you know what? I've used air abrasion on these all the time and I do everything under rubber dam. Crown preps, crown inserts, fillings, the whole lot. Everything except extractions. I haven't done that yet, but maybe, maybe, I don't know. We might try that. Um, but it's held up really well, so I'm really pleased with that. So when I first reviewed it, I was worried about how long they would last. But you know what? Time is the biggest, best test, and they've stood the test of time. That was really poetic. Anyway, so what are you gonna need? Like I said, you need a hole puncher, you need a rubber dam clamp holder, you're gonna need the frame as well, you need some clamps, you're gonna need some floss, a Sharpie, and a template. And the last thing you'll need is probably a, um, a plastic, a flat plastic, so you can flick the rubber dam over the top. Now let's talk about clamps first, because that's, I know why you're here. You're like, what clamps do I need to get to make this work? The good news for you is, even though there's thousands of different types of clamps, you probably need about four for it to work really well. Now my favorites are the 12A, 13A, the 2A, and the W3. That's it. And an anterior butterfly clamp if you want to do anterior teeth endo on it. But I'm sure you have these already because we need a rubber down for endo. So let me talk to you about these clamps to begin with. So the first one we have is the 13A. So that's the 13A there. So you can see it's got a reasonably large hole on the top. So when I say a hole, what I'm really talking about is this little space where the tooth would fit. So that's a molar size hole, while a premolar size hole looks a bit like that. See, it's a lot smaller. That hole is, is much, much smaller for the tooth to fit inside. So I'm not talking about the holes where the rubber dam clamp fits into, but that one, that one where the tooth goes into as well. So a 13A and a 12A are basically mirrored. They're like mirror images of both. So I'll get both for you. So that's a 12, sorry, that is a 13A there, and that's a 12A there. And there you go, you can see the difference between them. The large, the large um, beak goes on the buckle, and the smaller one goes on the lingual or the palatal. Now, these clamps make it really easy to figure out where you're gonna place them because a 13A clamp will fit on the odd quadrants. So it's 13, it's an odd number, so odd quadrants. So quadrant one and quadrant three. Now, for you Americans out there, when talking about quadrants, what does that mean? Quadrant one is the top right-hand side, quadrant two, top left, quadrant three, lower left, and quadrant four, lower right. Um, and the 12A, which is that one there, will go on the even quadrants. 12, it's an even number, so even quadrants. So they're good for sixes and sevens, and especially if you have a lot of room there. But if there's not enough room, if there's like, if you have a ramus that's really tight or um, a muscle that's really large and fat and you can't get in there or it's really tight as well, a W3 works really well. Now, what's this W and 12A nomenclature? What does that mean? Well, they made it kind of confusing in the sense that if it's got a W in front of it, it means it's wingless. Now, wingless means there's no little wings on the sides of that. Whereas when you look at these ones, you can see some wings on the sides of those. 
So if the patient has a really big ramus, or it's really tight in there, like big buckle uh, fat pad, or there's just a lot of muscle that's really tight in there, I like to use a wingless clamp. Now wingless clamp like the W3. Now it's call it W3 because W stands for wingless. It's a crazy way of naming something because it's like a double negative. W means wingless, and if there's no W, it means winged. I just, I didn't make the names, I just play by their rules. Sometimes, just not always. Um, so, wingless means there's no extra little bit of metal on the side here where the rubber dam can clip on top of. Well, a winged clamp, as you can see here, has this extra little bit of metal there, and the rubber dam can actually sit on that on both sides, and you can flick it off to actually make it go around the tooth. So a W3 is the one that I'd use for uh, molars at the back. Now for premolars, in case you're working further forward or there is no molars left, there's two clamps that I'd use for that. Um, there's a W2, so wingless number two, so really small area in there. And there is the 2A, which is same size in the middle, but it's just got the wings on the side. Now you don't need both of these, it's nice to have, but you don't need both. You just need to pick one or the other and that'll work really well. So if I'm gonna put a, uh, a 12A clamp on, it'll be on quadrant two. So this side here, quadrant two. I'll flip around so you can see on the other camera here. So basically you wanna extend it just ever so slightly, pop it on and let it go. Really simple to do. Now, if you're using a 13A clamp, then it's going to be a little bit different. You can't go on that quadrant because that won't work. You need to go on the other quadrant. So quadrant one and three. Okay, and for anteriors, there's two clamps really for anteriors that I'll use. Um, there is the butterfly clamp. So the number nine. And a secondary clamp, which I use just to hold things down at the very front if I'm working subgingival, is a Brickling B4. So it's a really tiny clamp. It's a secondary clamp because if you use it without other clamps, you're gonna find that it's not gonna be able to be strong enough to hug the tooth to hold rubber dam in place. It's gonna fling off. So you have other clamps that do the hard work, and this just kind of tucks the rubber dam into places where you wouldn't normally be able to get them to. So, enough chit chat. Let's look at rubber damming an arch. So we've got our template. Let me put that down. Um, and we've got a rubber dam. And when you put that on top, um, what I usually get my nurses to do is I'll get them to put an X in the middle and I'll put two dots on the top. I'll make them, where are we? I'll make them larger dots so that, so that you can see why I'm doing that. And the reason I'm doing that is so it's easy to orientate when it's in the mouth. So when you put this in the mouth and it's like all twisted, you wanna know which way up is. And I just know if both the dots are facing me and up, we're right. So we know they're gonna be good facing up. Um, now, we wanna move the rubber dam into the quarter that we're working on. Um, I found that if you just punch the rubber dam exactly in the center of this, like exactly in the center, what happens is that it doesn't really have enough room to stretch it to put it onto the frame. So what I tend to do is if I'm working in quadrant one, for instance, I will move the whole rubber dam closer towards quadrant one. If it's quadrant two, I'll move it closer to quadrant two. If it's quadrant three, I'll move it closer to quadrant three. So that X that we drew is now in that quadrant just under the teeth. Um, You'll find that if you do that, it's gonna save you a world of pain when you're trying to put these on later. So once that's in, you need to figure out which teeth you're gonna do. So let's do quadrant one. So quadrant one, I'm gonna clamp a molar tooth. So which clamp am I gonna be using? That's right, a 13A, odd. So 13A clamp, let's find that. Ta-da, 13A clamp. Um, and then we need to figure out which tooth we're going to be working on. So my rule of thumb is at least one tooth behind the tooth we're working on, if possible, and at least two teeth in front of the tooth we're working on. So if I'm working on a 1-6, then, then what I'll be doing is I'll be punching a hole from the 7, the 6, the 5, and the 4. Now the more holes you punch, 
the easier it is for the rubber dam to seat and the more space you're gonna get. So if you wanna have heaps of room to work with, punch more holes, you can't go wrong. It takes a few more seconds putting it on, but it's not really that much more. We're gonna look through this and punch out the holes. So I'm going six, five, four, sorry, seven, six, five, four. And I'll go three just for good measure. Now, once I've got those in place, I'm gonna use my rubber dam hole puncher and I'm gonna punch some holes. Now you want, there's different size holes in this. And basically you wanna get the smallest hole that will lie with the rubber dam on without it ripping. So if the hole is too big, it's not gonna cuff around the tooth. It's gonna let cravicular fluid get in and it's not gonna isolate the tooth as well. So I will use the middle hole for the hole that I'm putting the rubber dam in because I need to stretch that a lot more. And I'll use the second last hole, um, the second smallest hole for the other teeth as well. So let's try that out. So you put that in there. Get it in. This is the middle hole in. Punch, pull up and let go. And like that, we have a nice hole. There you go. Um, now I'm gonna switch it to the second last hole, second smallest, and I'm gonna punch the others exactly the same way. If you have a look, there I go. Punch, 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 punch. Now, once you've done this for a while, you can actually get your DAs to punch the holes for you. Um, I just tell them what tooth it is and they're pretty well trained to pick the right clamps and to punch the holes as well. Because when you do this for the first time in like five or 10 years, because my dears have done it for ages, you do this and you punch holes in the other parts of it. You don't wanna do that, so ignore that part. Um, now, we wanna put the rubber dam through. Now, there's two types of ways of putting rubber dam in. We have the winged clamp, and for the winged clamp, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch this hole out and I'm gonna tuck the wings into those holes. So just like that. And the reason I wanna do that is that's how these clamps work. So if I bring the model back, and in terms of putting the clamp holder on, there's holes in the rubber dam clamp. You put them in there and it goes away from the ring. So the ring always goes to the distal. You go through, you select the tooth. I usually say, oh, look, there's the first molar. I'm gonna clamp the second molar. It goes on. And then with a plastic, you basically flick that across. Just like that. And now you need to floss the other teeth. So you'll drag that across. So I will technically put the frame on at this stage. So the frame goes on. Now the way the frame works is it goes um, along the chin and the arc of it follows the way the mandible would be. So that way. Um, so I'll put the rubber dam clamp on. Now to put the clamp on, what I find is that the clamps don't come off if you stretch them from left to right, but they will if you stretch them top to bottom. So I don't put much pressure top to bottom, but left to right, I will. So now you need some floss, because you're gonna floss these through. So um, it is really easy when there's two people, but even if there's one person, you can just flick these across. Now obviously you'd be using gloved hands, but this is a model, so no gloves, because I'm saving them for actual patients, because right now, you guys all know PPE is in shortage, so I'm trying not to waste PPE if I can avoid it. So basically, pull it along the tooth. Now floss down. Floss down. It's, uh, it's much easier when the patient is like a full person. Um, it's easy to see this way, but They've got a lot more mass behind them so they don't go flying around when you're, when you're flossing. Now, the floss technique is quite an interesting one too. So you wanna do something called invert the dam, which is where the dam kind of folds in on itself. Now, the way to do that 
is to put the floss in and hold it down and next to the tooth with one finger and then pull out with the other. And as you do that, it's actually gonna pull in towards the gingiva and it's actually gonna invert the rubber dam just like that. Ta-da! You can do that with all the teeth. So pull it down, hold it down with one finger and let go with the other one. Now, if you wanna, if you wanna make um, your rubber dam sit down lower, you can do something called a ligature. Now, a ligature is basically where you take a floss, go in half, and you tie a knot in it. And now you have a slip knot that gets smaller and bigger as you pull. So all you need to do with that is, we'll make this a bit bigger, is you can put this over the tooth you want the rubber dam to sit down lower. And you basically floss. and pull it down. Easy as that. And you can extract teeth if you pull too hard. So take rubber dam, it's really simple. You wanna use your rubber dam clamp holder. Um, you go into basically those two holes again. You'll squeeze slightly. Now don't over squeeze and over stretch your rubber dam clamp because if you do, you're gonna ruin them and you're gonna to have to buy new ones faster. And look, they're the most, the most expensive dental equipment out there, but all dental equipment is expensive. So do yourself a favor and your boss a favor. Don't like clamp them too hard. Now we take that out just like that. And you'll give that to your assistant to take. And I actually get my assistant to give me a tissue which I'll put in there before I pull this out. And the reason for that is sometimes, because of the springy nature of rubber dam, there'll be liquid at the back, and when you pull it out, it'll fling up like a trampoline or a rubber band slingshot, and it'll slingshot into your face. So, so adding a tissue in there before you pull it out, will basically let it all come out. Ta-da! Now you might be asking, what about wingless clamps? Like, how do you put those on? So again, I'm gonna use the same bit of rubber dam because PPE and rubber dam is probably gonna get hard to get to, so uh, I don't wanna waste it if I can avoid it. But really simple. Um, again, let's use a molar example here. So that's the W3. So remember W means wingless. Um, it basically goes through the rubber dam hole, and then you fling it across that way. The clamp holder goes in there, and then and then you basically put it on the tooth. And then this is where having those two dots at the top really help, because now you need to orientate where it goes. But if you've got those two dots, you know exactly where it is. You'll put your rubber dam on there, remember, stretch left and right only, not up and down. And then you'll use a plastic or something similar and just flick that across. Just like that. So flick it across just like that. And then you'll start doing all the rest of it as well. Um, they do apply a lot of pressure. So in these plastic models, the teeth will wanna, will wanna come out, um, but it's a good way to practice what you have. So there you have it. Uh, quick summary, there's, let me take these off because they're valuable. Remember, don't overstretch. So there you go, um, a quick tutorial on how to put rubber dam on. Basically, you've got some clamps that you'll need. Uh, at the very least, I think you'll need a 13A and a 12A, a 2A and a W2 and a W3. I think that's all you really need. Um, if you do anterior endos, an anterior clamp, I think would be good as well. Um, make sure you get a nice 
nice hole puncher. So when they go blunt, it makes it really hard and it tears a lot more. Um, you'll need floss um, and you remember we need to mark it with a Sharpie. When you're making these, these little templates, remember put a, an X in the middle and then move it towards the quadrant that you're going to be clamping so that you can um, evenly distribute the rubber dam so you can actually pull it onto the frame. If you're doing the whole arch, which you might if you're doing like a full arch case, then I just go towards the middle of both arches there as well. So there you go, a quick tutorial on how to use rubber dam. Now if you like these, give us a thumbs up because that's how the YouTube algorithm knows that you love us and we should make more of these and they'll pump it out to more dentists so we're all informed. And make sure you subscribe so you can see more of these videos. And as always, leave a comment below because I'd love to hear your thoughts. Did I do anything wrong? Is there things that you would do differently? I'd love to hear all your comments. This is Dr. Tiv, over and out.